In the lesson 4.5, uh, we saw an animation in which we took uh, several thousands of linear combinations of three vectors, V, W, and Z, in two different cases. In the first case, we got a, photo, uh, a picture similar to, to this one on the top, in which we see that there is a uniform uh, uh, spreading of all these linear combinations in space. And in the second case, we move the vector z a little bit uh, uh, right bound, and the result, uh, after having taken again uh, several thousand linear combinations, was the one depicted by the, the, the picture here on the bottom you see there is a substantial difference in the in the distribution of all these linear combinations so why why we have such a big difference between these two situations the reason is the following in the first case the coordinates are as follows so the vector v equals 2, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3. The vector W is 5, 2, 2. And the vector Z equals 3, negative 4, 1. In the second case, we have the same V and W. They did not change. But the vector Z now is 3, 10 over 11. And one. So what is the big difference between these two triples of vectors? So here there is absolutely no linear combination between uh, V, W and Z. There is no linear relation between these three vectors. Whereas here we have that Z can be expressed as negative 1 over 11 times v plus 7 over 11 times w. So you see there is a linear combination expressing z in function of v and w and as a consequence the set of all linear combinations of the three vectors is basically reduced the set of linear combinations using just v and w without z whereas in this case if we had to use just v and w we would have we would have gotten exactly this uh, this picture and this is completely different so as you see there is a substantial difference regarding uh, the set of all linear combination uh, or linear combinations of a set of vectors if these vectors have no linear relations between them or they do have some linear relations be be between them. Okay, so this is the basic, this highlights the concept of linear dependence and linear independence of a set of vectors. So summing up, in this case the vectors are linearly independent whereas in this case they are linearly dependent now we give formal definitions of linear independence and linear dependence of vectors 
Let us give now the definitions of linear independence. So let S in V vector space be just a subset we say that S is a set of linearly dependent vectors if there exists a vector in S which we call, uh, let's say, V. So there exists a V in S. And V1 through V, let's say, K in S. such that the vector v can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors vi's for i that goes from 1 through k lambda i times vi okay so s is a set in V, is a set of linearly dependent vectors if there exists one vector inside S which can be expressed as a linear combination of other vectors in S. Okay. So this is the first definition. Second definition, what is linear independence? Linear independence is the negation of linear dependence. Therefore, S will be linearly independent vectors if this statement does not happen. Okay. We say that S is a set of linearly independent vectors if if it is not, well, if they, if the vectors, they are not linearly dependent. Let's just rephrase this statement of linear dependence. Okay, so let's say a remark. S are linearly dependent vectors if say there exists a certain number of vectors inside S in this particular case the vectors were V and then from V1 to VK so let's just call them with the 
in a different way let's say if there exists a certain number of vectors uh, w1 through wn in s and a linear combination sum for i that goes from 1 to n of alpha i w i that equals to 0 the 0 vector in v and some of these alpha i at least one of these alpha i's is non-zero with let's say an alpha j different from zero okay S summing the opposite of v in both sides and we will see that uh, on the left hand side we will get the zero and on the right hand side we will get a negative v uh, therefore there will be a um, linear combination of v i's from 1 to k and v for which not all the coefficients are zero but that gives the zero vector indeed the coefficient of v will be negative one so so this is just the same as saying this statement okay so there is a non-trivial linear combination of certain vectors in s which gives me the zero vector in v this is the same definition as the one of before uh, for linear linear dependence of vectors therefore negating this statement is the same as saying that s are linearly independent vectors if and only if for any time i'm able to any time i'm able to get a linear combination that gives me the null vector in v well, this linear combination of vectors in S must have the all zero coefficients. Okay, there will not be a non-trivial linear combination of vectors in S that gives me the the, the new vector in V. Okay, so let's state this. Therefore. S are linearly independent vectors if the, uh, the following statement is true A linear combination for i goes from 1 to say n of beta i times w i equals to 0 in v so a linear combination as such with v w i's all in s for each i implies that all the coefficients beta i are zero it implies that beta i's are zero for every i of course i'm always able to get uh, such a linear combination to give me zero just taking all the coefficient to be zero the non-trivial content of this definition is that this is the only way I can get the zero vector as a linear combination of vectors inside S okay so this is exactly the content of linear independence of vectors